In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace a light switch. In my case, this is a single pole or one-way switch. So if you're interested in learning how to do that yourself, stay tuned. As always, I will have a link in the description below to timestamps in the video. If you wanna go ahead and jump to a certain topic in the video and not hear me ramble about different things, I appreciate it if you wanna to listen to me rambling, but if you wanna go straight to the content, follow the timestamps in the description below. So the switch that I'll be replacing is this switch here. It is a GE switch. It is the Z-Wave series. If you can see that on the back of the switch itself, and we will be replacing this not with another smart switch, but just with a normal switch like the one you see here. You might be wondering why would I wanna replace a smart switch in the first place? Well, it's very simple. The other night I was having problems falling asleep and I heard the power go out, right? So the power blinked very briefly. And the next day when I went downstairs, I heard what you're about to hear, which is an ominous ticking. I did not edit that video, that's what it sounded like. And uh, yeah, that needed to stop. So what seems to have happened from my internet research, things like that, is that this particular early version of this GE switch, uh, when the power goes out, when a breaker's thrown, things like that, sometimes it can cause this switch to start ticking. And there are different things you can try to reset it, but many of you know the Redditors out there, the commenters would say, just go ahead and replace the switch. So that is what I wanted to do in this video. So the tools that you will want for this project are going to include a Phillips and flathead screwdriver, some wire strippers, a box cutter, as well as the actual switch itself. You might also need a voltage tester if you can't verify that you've gotten the correct breaker turned off when you go to your breaker box. So just go ahead and start backing out the screws on the cover plate itself. And then once you've done that, you might need a box cutter to loosen that cover plate slightly from the wall. But once that's loosened, that cover plate should come right off. What you wanna do now is go ahead and start loosening the screws that are holding the switch to the outlet box itself. Uh, I'm using a Phillips head screwdriver in my case, but just go ahead and take those screws out. You might find that once you take the screws out, that switch does not come out easily. And if that's the case, you wanna use a box cutter to cut around that switch, to cut off some of that paint that might be holding that switch to the wall. But once you've done this, you should be able to pull your switch out and at this point, you could then test uh, the switch itself to see if it still has power if you're not sure that you flipped the right breaker. In my case, the popping stopped, so I knew I had the right one. So I'm going to show you the barbaric way to remove this switch. Take your wire strippers or whatever you're using that has the ability to cut wire and just go ahead and cut that out. If you have enough wire left in your outlet box, this might be a good option. Uh, in my case, I did. So what I did was I just used my wire strippers to cut those off. I did use a screwdriver to go ahead and loosen my copper ground. There's some weird stuff going on with that uh, here, but I did use the screwdriver to loosen it up. And in a moment, I'll actually show you the non-barbaric way, the peaceful way to remove this outlet. All you would do is uh, use the screwdriver on those terminals and you're able to loosen the screw. And once you loosen the screw, that wire comes right out. So it's, it's really not hard to remove this outlet. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to restrip my wire since I chose to cut them off. All I'm doing is using my wire strippers to do that, get nice clean contacts that I can then use to make connections to my new outlet itself. Let's install this new outlet. It's right here and ready to go. It's at that moment he knew he messed up. I normally don't interject my video commentary into the middle of a how-to part of the video, but I felt like it was necessary in this video to explain the thought process that went through my head and how wrong it actually was. So when I took the switch out, I was expecting it to be a straight, you know, one-way switch, nothing complicated, but what threw me off my game was on the back of the switch, you can see you have your two wires, one going to the light, one bringing in power. They had the neutral connected into the switch and they, it actually says, the description on the switch says, put your neutral wire here. Now why that threw me is, and I'll go ahead and put up on the screen, a typical wiring diagram for a single uh, way, one way switch. And you'll see there that typically your neutrals are tied together outside of the switch itself. It's not something that normally plugs into the back of the switch. 
So I needed to take a break and kind of recoup and try to figure out what I needed to do going forward. What I did, because I felt like I needed some more time to kind of think things through, is I went ahead and I put wire nuts over my wires and tucked them back uh, into the outlet box. One of the reasons for this is it was time for my children to come home and they always like to watch Frozen, you know, for the hundredth time to see if Elsa saves Anna from the Frozen Heart. And because this particular light switch is on the same circuit as our television, uh, I needed to go ahead and power that circuit back up. So I just went ahead and put some wire nuts on the end of the wires, tucked them back into the box, flipped the breaker back on, and then resumed work the next day. So after I had done some Google searches and had a good night's rest, I went ahead and came back down to work on this project, making sure the breaker was in fact still open so the power was not um, coming into the switch and into these wires. I then removed my wire nuts. Uh, something you're not going to see on camera is I did go ahead and take that neutral and, and solve that problem and make sure it was tied back in and not tied into the switch itself. So that is something that I fixed. Just make sure once again, you're reading the instructions that come with your switch. You're you know looking things up online and make sure that you're doing it right in your particular application. And you can see here, I'm just using the pushing connections to and checking them to make sure they're in there good and tight uh, to connect the wire to the switch itself. I'm adding the ground by tightening down uh, that screw that holds the ground in place. I'm then working my switch back into the outlet box and I'm tightening the screws that hold the outlet in place. I typically tighten the first one maybe halfway, then tighten the bottom one up most of the way, and then go back and tighten uh, the top one up all the way. Also, I have some wiggle room to be able to maneuver that switch before I put the cover plate on. So after I put the cover plate on, it's very simple to attach. You just use screws uh, and tighten them by hand with a flathead screwdriver. But after that cover plate is back on, I'm going to go out to my garage and flip the breaker and you can hear the popping is gone. The sound of silence. So that is the video. And I would also tell you that from the time that I replaced this switch, I've actually had another switch go bad and start with this popping where flipping the breaker won't reset it, the tricks on the internet won't reset it, so it's looking like I'm going to need to replace it as well. As always, if you've liked the video, I would sincerely ask slash beg slash plead that you like, comment, and subscribe, and I will respond to as many comments as uh, I can and as are, you know, pleasantly worded. Uh, so yeah, thanks for your time, and I'll talk to you next time. I like to think it's some, some place in the world, there's someone running like this betting pool of when my house is going to burn down. And trust me, if it does, you'll be one of the first people to know. I will, t I will make a YouTube video saying, my bad wiring has burned down my house. Uh, but as of yet, it has not happened. And I'm going to continue to tinker with it um, as, as issues arise. So, um, you know, bet for me, bet against me, I don't care. But like I said, I think somewhere people are, are betting. So maybe get in on the action.